This video is for Building Java Programs, Chapter 8, which is about Java Classes, uh, Exercise 8.7, Add Time Span. So um, I'm going to warn you ahead of time, I'm not going to solve this problem for you, but I will walk you through it and help you would understand what's going on and how to solve this. So this uh, problem is asking us to add a method to an existing class. The class is the Time Span class, and this class is described in Chapter 8 of Building Java Programs. So you really need to get the book and watch that class, uh, read that class. I strongly recommend anyone who's trying to learn how to program in Java that you get the book, you read the book. There's just far too much information in there. It's a very good book for to be, to be uh, able to cover it in just these little videos. But so the, um, the time span class, its quick summary here, has hours and minutes, and it had these has these methods add, get hours, get minutes, and two string. And then the add method that they provide uh, takes hours and minutes. And what this problem is asking you to do is to provide another version of add. And I want to ask you, what does what is it called when there are two methods with the same name but different signatures? Okay, this has hours and minutes. And this has time span. Do you remember what that's called? That's called overloading. So we're going to overload the, the add method so that you could add either the hours and minutes or you can add another time span. All right, so let's, instead of doing the code here, I'm going to switch over to Eclipse. So I've got Eclipse here, and I've actually got a copy of the uh, the same code that um, they, they worked on in the book for the time span class. And let's quickly do a review of this. So this is a time span. It has hours and minutes. So remember, all your public classes, you're going to have these private member variables, okay? And so we've got hours and we've got minutes, both integers. So then all classes have at least three different things in them. Constructors, which is going to be here. Your getters and setters, which unfortunately they don't actually show here. Uh, we may need to implement those. And then um, your other methods, your mutators and things like that on. So add is a mutator. It's going to add hours to that. Uh, they also implement equals here. And then lastly down here they have the two string. Okay. So uh, let's let's actually um, so what I've done is I've implemented this little test client class here called time test. And in my main what I'm going to do is construct a new time span and I'm going to print it out. And let's actually debug this so you can see what's going on. So I'm going to double click to the left of line three to set a breakpoint. I'm going to uh, debug so you can click this icon here. It's going to stop right here. Okay, then we're going to step into, so that's step into F5. Uh, well, it's gone. Okay, there we go. Uh, why didn't it hit the constructor? Let's let's set the breakpoint of the constructor. Try that again. Let's debug. It's going to create new time span. If we step into, it should hit the breakpoint at the, okay, we'll go on. And it'll hit the breakpoint at the constructor. Come on. Let's... Oh, uh, we need to continue. Okay, first we're going to run. Then I'm going to F8, which is where? Resume. Okay, here is, here is the constructor. So the constructor is being called. And let's take a look. What is the variable hours? Five minutes is zero. Okay, then we're going to step over. I'll hit F6. Okay, so it's going to set hours to zero, minutes to zero, and then it's going to add the hours and minutes. That's kind of funny because why don't they just set the hours and the minutes right here? Um, no reason. Um, one thing I often do is that in the constructor, I will often use setters that I've created. So in that sense, that's what they're doing here. They're using other methods to set the fields. It is a little bit funny. The advantage here is that, um, and actually they, there was no reason to set it to zero because by default, if you remember, when you create a class, all the entire class is always filled with zeros. But um, what it's going to do is it's going to pass all, what, what this does achieves for us really is that um, it makes sure that there's only one place. There's only one place in the code that actually knows 
how to set up hours and minutes. Okay, so instead of a, a setter, they have add. So we're going to step into this. So this dot hours plus equals hours. Okay, this is a very important code for some of these problems because uh, it shows you a couple of things. First of all, it shows you that uh, how to how to access member variables. Okay, that's what the this dot hours is. It's member variables. You know, sometimes I see people uh, in the either the constructor. They they sometimes do like they go ahead and they say int hours equals hours. Okay, thinking that that's correct. There's several problems with that. One is you've created a new local variable here that has nothing to do with the member variable here. And the difference is the scope of existence. So when you create hours, this member variable here, this variable only in its existence when you're executing from this line, this line, this line, anything in this block here. As soon as you hit this last line here and you return, hours goes away. It's gone. It's never to be accessed again. It's gone. Okay. So we lost that information about five hours. Versus these member variables up here. Okay. These are in existence. As soon as anybody calls new, okay, calls this constructor here, that's when these things come into existence. And then they stay in existence. Okay. Long after this function is done. That hours, five hours that was stored away in this member variable is still in existence. So this five hours is going to exist in this variable TS, and it's going to exist as long as the lifespan of TS, which in this case, so this uh, variable TS is in existence, and it's existence through this entire block here, and we're going to be doing much more code. But that's the difference, okay? This, when it's a member variable, the member variable stores its data in this object that you've created through the through the new function okay and it stays in existence however long this variable has scope okay whereas a local variable here goes away immediately all right so sorry about that distraction but I see students do, all, do that all the time all right and then so they, they take take the hours here and then they add them here and of course we have to use this dot hours but whenever you're using a method variable or a method uh, member method, you want to use this dot to help you understand that it's, it's not just some local variable. It's actually a member variable. Okay, so they add the hours, they add the minutes, and then they convert the any extra minutes into an hour. Ah, that's, uh, sorry, <laughs> I take it back what I said earlier. Uh, well, no, I don't. So it, it's still pointless that they set the zeros here. But again, so the reason why they're not just setting the hours and the minutes with the with the value here why couldn't they set the minutes equals minutes? Well, because if the minutes is a thousand minutes, it needs to be converted to hours. That's why they're using add here. That's I sorry, I forgot that. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and delete these these lines. I don't think those are necessary. I'll find out if I'm wrong. Um, okay, so we create that new object. Let's go ahead and finish stepping through here. Oh, I, I have to rerun this because I modified the code, I believe. Okay, so let's run resume. Okay, now let's finish stepping through. We add, and then we're going to print this out. And it prints out five hours. Yeah, and yeah, it didn't matter with the, it didn't have zeros because those are already in there by default. Okay, so. Uh, what this method is adding us asking to do is to add uh, a new method, and this is going to take a time span. And I'm not going to write the code for you, but I want to just experiment here and show you. Instead of adding the time span, um, I'm going to first take a look at how do we get the hours and the minutes out of the time span. So I'm going to print out hours. And then how do I get the hours? So normally what I would do is I would do a t.get hours, but there is no get hours because they didn't write one. So it's since we're inside the method, we can use just t.hours. Okay. Only because we're inside the method. And let me, you know, one common error that people might make is they say, oh, this dot hours, because they think, oh, everything is this dot hours, right? No, okay, so this dot hours, 
would be the hours of this object here that's already been created. Five hours, for example, could be whatever this was created with. That would be the, the, the object's hours. Whereas what we want is we want to add in a time zone. In fact, here, let's write this code here so it's, maybe it's a little bit clearer. TS, um, actually, let's do it after we print it. TS.add, and then we're going to put in a new time span. Let's say this time span is going to be uh, three hours and three minutes. Okay, just something completely odd so that we'll know the difference. And then we're going to sys out of TS. And it's complaining because we haven't finished this method yet, I think, right? Um, oh, new time span. Okay, we have to add TS.add. Uh, yeah, I just have to close that. Okay. Now let's finish writing this. Okay, so we're going to print this dot hours plus, and then we're going to say minutes, and then we're going to say uh, not this uh, t dot minutes, and we're going to have to get rid of the this, and make it t. Okay. So this is just to show you what's how do we extract that time span. So this isn't going to change anything. Okay, we've got a too many param parens here. This isn't going to change the output. It's still going to be five hours, three hours, three minutes. Fix that. So it does get three hours and three minutes. So now, how do we add these three hours and three minutes? Okay. So again, I'm not going to actually do the right thing for you, but I'm going to show you how can we affect this dot hours. So remember, so what's the difference between t dot hours? And this dot hours, these two things. What's the difference here? This is an important thing you need to make sure you understand. The difference is that the this dot hours is the hours for the object that has been created here or here. Okay. Um, well, that gets a little bit confusing, right? Because I just created an object here, and this object's this dot hours is going to be three, but the t dot hours is whatever is being passed in for this for the object ts okay that's going to be this object here new time span so it's a little bit recursive that's a term you haven't actually learned yet but you have to you have to be thinking uh differently here let's for clarity's sake let's do this uh ts add i'm going to create a new variable and stick it into that okay and then i'll say ts add okay so when we call this here new time span, it's going to go in. It's going to go into the constructor, okay, which is this one uh, here. Uh, sorry, uh, time span. We got two different constructors, don't we? No. Okay, we've only got one constructor. This is the t the constructor because when we know it's the constructor because it's the same name as the class and it has no return type. Okay, so it takes the hours and minutes. It sets that 3, 3. Okay, but then when we call ts.add, uh, maybe that's a bad name because they both look like ts.add. Okay, um, let's call it ts.diff, all right? That maybe makes sense. Okay, so when we call ts.add, okay, this is going to be called on the ts object, which has, which has internally stored into it 5 hours, 0 minutes. Okay, that's mean that this dot hours is five hours. It's going to be called with ts diff. That's this parameter here, t. So this t dot hours is going to be three. There. Okay. So hopefully you need to understand what the difference between, between these two objects are. Now let's just arbitrarily add something to the hours. So how do we affect the hours of this object? And when I say this object, that's kind of a pun because it's, it really is this, right? So if I want to affect anything of this object that we're talking about that's been created here, I need to use this. So let's affect the hours by adding two hours in. And let's affect the minutes by adding two minutes in. Let's try running that. So it Passed, we passed in three hours and three minutes, but what it actually added was two hours and two minutes because that's what I added 
here. So you're going to have to figure out how do you get the correct hours and the correct minutes to add in here. All right. That's what you need to do. Now, if you just try to, to do what I've copied, what I've done here and paste it in, you're going to find it doesn't work for many different reasons. Okay. One reason is that practice it always checks to see what the output is. And the output in this case is going to be this hours and minutes. Okay. So you can't leave that output in. Second, you're going to find that there's a problem when you just add the hours and minutes. What's the problem? Well, remember when I talked to you earlier about why this time span constructor, why does it call add instead of just setting the hours and the minutes? Remember that discussion? Go back and look at that discussion if you don't remember. You can't just set the hours and minutes because of a very structural problem uh, with this particular problem, okay? Normally you can, but in this problem you can't because 60 hours make it, 60 minutes make an hour. Anything over 60 minutes makes makes one hour and zero minutes, okay? And then you have to convert between the hours and minutes. And that's why you want to use this code here. And that's why, in general, you always want to make sure you're reusing code. Don't try to set the member variables in five different places. Set it in one place through a setter, or in this case, an add. And then you won't have to worry about trying to change it and make it work in all those different places. Well, let's review what we've learned here. So this problem is about adding a secondary constructor. This problem already had one constructor taking um, a time span with hours and minutes, and we added a new constructor that handles uh, taking an object. And this is um, this is an overload of the add method that takes hours and minutes. So now this one takes a, a time span object, and we talked about how uh, what's the difference between the the this dot private members and the difference in the parameters uh, hours and minutes and we talked about how to access your hours and minutes of the this of the this object and also the this passed in time span object we talked about how you can set the hours and minutes and why you don't want to set them directly like this is showing here but instead you want to call the constructor or the setter uh, the setter that here that will um, be able to know, really understand, and understand how your object operates. So you can reuse code and avoid having to rewrite the same kind of code all over the place. And uh, we also talked about so a few things about practice it, why you can't just put a random printout and practice it, because that's going to interfere with the way practice it determines things um, and tests things. So if you found this useful, please like and subscribe. That helps other uh, students find these videos and get these helpful tips. Thank you very much.